extremely grateful to be here today, and in fact, this is a chance for me to say thank you more formally. The, the Chevy Bolt is upstairs. We'll be able to take a look at it. Thank We've you. got about a thousand photos. Yeah. Is yeah, it plug? <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. The batteries are in the trunk? No, the battery in this particular design is a T-shape right down the center and across the back seat area. Because everybody thought we killed the electric vehicle. No, we didn't. It's alive and well. Last. So what's charging the, the batteries right now? What, where, where, what's the source of a Well, electricity? here. It's, it's coming from the building. I mean, are, is it, um, what's our mix of power? Oh, actually, Lansing feeds the building. What's that? Lansing feeds power to the building. So I don't, I don't know. They're, uh... I bet you they're a bit of coal. Oh, they're heavy on natural gas, aren't they? Uh, right now the car is charging off of your grid. Right. It would be charging off, uh... Our grid, which is nine, about 95% coal. <laughs> wow, that lady shilling electric vehicles. Sure doesn't want you to know that her electric car is being charged by coal. Gee, I wonder why. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of WeAreChange.org. And man, is there some absolutely crazy news to get into today. As, of course, the consequences of extremely irresponsible politicians are being felt by everyone. Those effects are only going to be exacerbated. Things are getting serious. And, yeah, we have a proxy conflict also happening inside of Ukraine with some larger stakes at hand. What's going on? What's the latest developments with that? Along, of course, with some troubling developments here domestically, which we're going to be talking about all in this video so much news we're just gonna jump right into it as of course there's a major PR push to get everyone to drive electric cars that's being pushed on by the media and political establishment of this country even though it is absolutely unsustainable there wouldn't be enough energy there's not enough batteries there's not enough natural resources that is not enough electrical cars and there won't be anytime soon but that logic hasn't stopped egotistical bureaucratic buffoons like the Democratic senator from Michigan that was just publicly bragging about how the price of gas doesn't matter to her because she drives an electric vehicle by every gas station. Electric vehicles that cost on average over $57,000 and are of course extremely in high demand mainly because of you know the great reset policies that have been instituted by the Biden administration that has been destroying domestic energy production and exploration the price of gas has been going up dramatically throughout the entire Biden administration that of course is pushing more green policies that are absolutely illogical and are creating the havoc that we are seeing right now at the pump as we are seeing gas prices at the highest reaching records in some places as it is $6.37 a gallon in California. In Missouri, it's as low as $4.49. Lots of theft, excuse me, taxes in between those two states. But truly, what we're seeing is a deliberate internal destabilization of our economic system, all done by the policies of this administration that is literally doing this on purpose. So next time you're at the pump and you're starting to ask yourself, why is everything so expensive? Why can't I afford common health? household goods. Why is the price of everything virtually going up? You can be thankful that you're a part of this incredible transition that is being brought onto you deliberately by this current regime that we are living under. Another thing that has been going up, especially in major democratic areas, is violent crime, to the point where even a Supreme Court Justice, Brett Kavanaugh, was just targeted as just moments ago, we're finding out that an armed California man was threatening to take out the Supreme Court Justice and luckily was arrested outside of his home just moments ago. After making public threats, he was found with multiple weapons on him. All of this as just recently the corporate media has been excusing the public doxing of Supreme Court justices who had their information leaked to the general public about where they lived. Protesters were showing up to their homes, which was a clear violation of federal law, and the corporate mainstream media excused this type of behavior, and now we have a further 
escalation that, of course, we were telling you what was going to happen. After all the smaller escalations were, were slowly and surely wrapping up, we told you that this was going to be a big possibility, and now we're dealing with the larger consequences of it. We're also finding out just now that this man also had burglary tools, was in his mid-20s, and according to the authorities, was mad at the Supreme Court justice because of their upcoming decision on Roe v. Wade, which was also leaked to the general public. Now, what will happen to this California man well, it depends in what state and what prosecutor tries to punish him. As of course, if it's a prosecutor bought for, excuse me, excuse me, paid for by, by this individual in their campaign, you could bet your bottom dollar that they're probably going to get a slap on the wrist, which many career criminals in California have been doing to the point where the people of California have just voted to kick out the woke Black Lives Matter aligned district attorney that of course was bankrolled by this man after creating massive havoc in the streets of San Francisco using his power for political purposes and many times allowing violent criminals to roam the streets unabated without any real legitimacy legitimate prosecution of them. And it's not just Supreme Court justices and fellow city dwellers inside of Democratic areas that have to worry about violence. The Department of Homeland Security just issued another memo warning that they are expecting violence to grip the United States this summer, especially when it comes to the upcoming Supreme Court decision, the increase of migrants at the U.S.-Mexican border, and upcoming midterm elections, which the Department of Homeland Security sees as a potential trigger for extremist violence within the next six months. And with the way things that the corporate media has been shaping things, framing things, pushing an agenda, pushing the larger divide and conquer narrative. Yeah, I, I think it's logical to understand where we are headed as a country. Also, in other unrelated news, the United States just started to bomb Somalia again, which in my opinion is absolutely ridiculous, especially from my previous on the ground reporting in Somalia. Anyway, another thing coming out of Africa Africa that we should worry about is the latest fear mongering surrounding a disease which we're going to be talking about exclusively on LukeUncensored.coms as we have new bombshell statements from Bill Gates that essentially is admitting defeat. We also have this sudden adult death syndrome, SADS, that we're going to be talking about, which of course I have a very interesting theory to share about why this is happening that conversation plus a lot more especially if you listened to it you're probably if you were on luke uncensored months ago two years ago you probably don't have to worry uh, about sads but again we're going to be discussing this plus a lot of other hot button issues specifically on lukeuncensored.com where we have a lot of particular offers available to you as members lots of things going on here sign up right now if you haven't yet as we're doing a lot of very exciting things on this platform now uh, i think it's fair to say that uh the world is in trouble because of the horrible moves made by a lot of egotistical sadistic politicians that of course have been clearly using the system to benefit themselves and screw everyone else over the results of that are clearly being seen can't be covered up can't be lied about there's not enough propaganda in the world to stop the obvious results of this corruption and now the world is dealing with a fuel and food crisis that of course is going to be affecting us even more in just a few weeks and months from now. There's an interesting article about this by a Tom Lungu who wrote an article titled Biden's Food and Fuel Crisis. It's the policy, stupid. And when you truly start examining how we got here, that of course is perfectly represented by the actions of those in government. Even the housing market is, is facing a reality check as mortgage applications dropped to their lowest level in 22 years. This as the housing market market that has been being eaten up by BlackRock according to many financial experts, will soon face a correction. Interest rates are also expected to double mortgage rates, as of course many people expect home values to decline. With some people asking the question, will they? Especially with the rising in inflation, especially with the value of the dollar significantly dropping every single day, since of course, you know, we have quasi-secret private banker bailouts happening, essentially creating socialism for the super rich inside of this country, and more importantly, the 
international interests that, of course, benefit off of these policies. And then, of course, we have the situation in Russia and Ukraine that is making this that much worse, as, of course, there's public clashes and conversations about the upcoming global food crisis to the point where even a Russian ambassador stormed out of a UN meeting as European Union politicians were accusing him of making this problem that much worse with accusations of Russia blocking Ukrainian ports. Now, I think it's fair to say that the situation in Ukraine, this larger proxy conflict between the United States and Russia is definitely not helping the global financial picture. And when it comes to Ukraine's and Russia's largest exporter, energy, fertilizer, and wheat, those operations, of course, have been stalled by this proxy conflict. The U.S. Secretary of State is accusing Russia of stealing Ukrainian grain. And of course, there have been photos and videos of Russians also stealing Ukrainian farming equipment. The United States is saying that Russia is going to try to blackmail the West into lifting sanctions. Sanctions, of course, that also are not helping the global financial picture and only are exacerbating this current financial problem that everyone is facing, especially energetically, as of course, Russia is one of the chief exporters of energy on the world market. Those markets have been disrupted, and now it looks like there's an egotistical back and forth between resources, as of course, the average citizen is, is left kind of looking around and be like, why are you guys doing this? This is stupid and of course going to create a long-term effect for a lot of people that are going to have to deal with the consequences of. Now of course it's also important to note here that the people who will be feeling the, the effects the most out of all of this geopolitical nonsense are of course some of the poorest people and countries in this world, countries in the Middle East, countries in Africa and in Asia that are truly looking at some very troubling times ahead that they are going to be facing the full brunt and consequences of. This as the conflict in Ukraine still continues it looks like it will not be ending anytime soon. This as there have been massive battles inside of the Donbass region inside of Ukraine. The Ukrainians are saying that they just destroyed an elite Russian fighting unit after a grueling 14-hour battle. Who knows if that's true since there's been a lot of fake news here. The, the Russians are saying that they just officially completed the, their land bridge from Western Russia to Donbass to Crimea. And this conflict is becoming more of a stalemate by the day. And in my opinion, it is being deliberately prolonged, especially by foreign interests that are giving Ukrainians just enough weaponry and resources to prolong this battle and not have a definite decision in this entire conflict. The president of Ukraine is vowing a full deoccupation of the entirety of Ukraine. The French president who's in contact with the Russians and Ukrainians is warning the world to, quote, not humiliate Russia and not to try to prolong this conflict because of the longer consequences of it, saying that the West should provide an exit strategy for this conflict, which as of right now is not being done at all. The opposite is being done with in the Biden administration, which of course will exacerbate the longer financial consequences of everything and endangerment of everyone geopolitically as the situation becomes more desperate and insane inside of that region. So yeah, fair to say, lots of troubles upcoming. Hope you guys are prepared. You probably are if you've been listening to LukeUncensored.com. We're doing, going to be doing yet another video later on there today. I hope you guys join us for that very important conversation. If you thought what I said was wrong, let me know what that was down in the comment section below. I don't always get things right, but I'm open to constructive criticism and seeing things from a different perspective, which I think people should be open to. If you thought what I did w w was good and provided a perspective that is worth sharing, share it with your friends and family members, random strangers, someone messages you that you don't want to talk to, just send them back this video. And because you guys do that, because you guys go on LukeUncensored.com, I'm still able to be here. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on WeAreChange.org.